Hey there, Twins fans. My name is Seth Stoles of Twins Daily, welcoming you to a special episode of Twins Spotlight, episode 10. It's a big one. It's a milestone one. And tonight uh, on the show, we're going to be, uh, we'll be doing some talking Tory. Obviously, Tory Hunter, uh, former Twins player twice, uh, Twins Hall of Famer, is now on the Baseball Hall of Fame ballot this year. So I thought it'd be kind of fun uh, chatting a little bit about him um, with a couple of guests. And and uh, we're hoping that Jock Jones will join us here. I know he had a charity event, so he's running a little bit late, and hopefully he'll be able to get here within the next little bit. Uh, if not, obviously, we, we tried, but... Uh, former teammate, uh, was with the Twins from 1999 to 2005, had 132 uh, home runs with the Twins. Um, just a great career. And, again, check out All Hands on Deck. It's an a organization he started in San Diego uh, to help kids, and not only in baseball, but uh, in life and education and all of that. Our second guest, Nico Gordado, and we'll bring him in here. Uh, you've seen him in recurring roles on the Goldbergs. He was a lead character uh, in the Party of Five show last year. Uh, he also was in the clubhouse often uh, with his dad, Twins Hall of Famer Eddie Gordado, and uh, has probably a few stories to share. So let's bring in Eddie. Uh, sorry, let's bring in Nico quick. Yeah. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Uh, doing well, doing well. So uh, let's start with you. We'll ask one question quick. What yeah. is earliest memory of uh tory hunter and uh and getting to kind of know him ah geez earliest memory is like you know like probably when i was like four or five something like that you know walking around the clubhouse to a lot to a lot of these guys you know what i think like differentiates between someone like royce or or my brother who's in the baseball is you know these guys get looked up to as like athletes obviously for what they've done in their careers or, you know, people look up to them and say, I want to do that one day with me. I mean, I, I, I could care less about being an athlete as a kid. Um, it just wasn't the way I wanted to go. Um, so I looked up to a lot of these people, you know, Jock, Latroy, my dad, Tori, um, as men, you know, as, as people. And, uh, they embedded, um, a lot of life lessons, um, into me and it's made me the man I am today. So yeah, it's been it's been truly, truly a, a great blessing to have so many people come in my life, um, especially Tori to to teach me about life. For sure. And we'll we'll get back to uh, Nico here, but I want to bring in our next guest as well. And that's uh twin stop prospect Royce Lewis. He as you know I, this is on Twins Daily. You've heard of Royce Lewis before I know that. So Number one pick in 2017 out of high school. He's a consensus top 25, and he's gotten to know Tori uh, multiple ways, uh, including back home in Southern California, but also in a role with the Twins. So let's bring Royce into the show right now. And uh, Royce, first, how are you doing tonight? And second, I'll ask you the same question, your your first memories. Yeah, thank you. I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on, Seth. And uh, Nico, what's going on, man? And, uh, yeah, my first memory uh, – there's a lot of them for sure, but my first one was uh, probably when he first knew that I was uh, William Lewis's son. You know, I, I uh, he's known my dad for a while, being in the restaurant business my father was, and, uh, you know, Tori would go out there to eat with all the boys and teammates uh, after games, and uh, he got to know my dad for a while, and then my dad one day, he texts uh, Tori. I was like, hey, Dad, did you see uh, Tori hit two homers today? Did you see that? Like, That's awesome. I mean, it was maybe – 12, 13, 14, one of those young guys. And uh, and my dad goes, yeah, I saw, I shot him a text. He said, good job. I was like, what? You shot him a text? <laughs> like, you know, he's, like, he's kind of like one of my idols, you know? It's like I grew up uh, watching a few guys. And it's very much so like Nico said, you know, it's uh, you get to know people, obviously, as an athletic standpoint of like, man, he can really play the game. Uh, I want to do that one day. Uh, Etc. But when you really get to meet someone and know how they how they are as a person, uh, it truly separates themselves from all the other people, athletes, etc. So uh, for me, it was guys like Tori, Derek Jeter, uh, Matt Kemp. Uh, those are my three guys that I really looked up to, and um, man, it was just a blessing that I got to actually get to know and meet him uh, more on a personal level. Man. 
All right. Thank you very much, Royce. And uh, our third guest of the night is with us now. And he has a long 10-year Major League career uh, with the Twins for six of those, hit 132 home runs with the Twins. And uh, he himself was on the Hall of Fame ballot just a couple of years ago. Uh, that is Jock Jones. Jock, how are you tonight? And uh, everything going well? I believe you uh, were working a little charity event uh, for your new organization tonight. Is that right? Uh, no, not tonight, but uh, the, the past couple of weekends I was. Okay. So you have a little different perspective than these young guys. Uh, you got to know Tori probably going back to uh, when you were drafted second round by the Twins in 1996. What were your early memories and Again, you spent five years in the big leagues with him too, so you probably have a little different perspective than uh, than these twenty somethings. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we met in the, in the fall of ninety six in the instructional league, and we just clicked right off the bat. Um, we were roommates. We hung out. We hung out in instructional league. We learned from each other. We. Um, just, I mean, we were just joined at the hip. Um, and then he, uh, I started at low A and he started at double A. And then I, I caught up with him the next year at double A. And it just, I mean, we just, we, we've always been close. We've always been tight. I, I've, I looked up to him. I learned from him. He's learned from me. It was just, I mean, he's just a, he's a really a, a great teammate and a, a good person to, to follow. Absolutely. So run real quick last screen here as we, uh, thank our guests for joining. But, you know, if we're looking at the Cooperstown case, a 19-season career, hit well, had 498 doubles, 353 home runs, a lot of RBIs, the nine gold gloves, five all-star games, two silver sluggers, eight playoff appearances, including four with the Twins. So, again, I want to thank all our guests. I want to thank everyone for listening. And if you would like, please feel free to ask questions to our, our panelists. But I want to go back uh, to Jock. I, the question I have for you is, uh, you were on the ballot, the Hall of Fame ballot, about mm -hmm. five or six years ago. And I'm going to start with you because you even got a vote. So um, what people always say that it's cool just to be nominated, just to be on the ballot. Uh, is that true? Or, you know, I mean, I can't imagine. That's got to be a good honor in its own right. Well, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a great honor, especially coming from where we all came and uh, our dream was, was to be – a professional, you know, baseball player and be an MVP and an all-star and a Hall of Famer and all those good things or else she wouldn't have strived to become a, a professional baseball player. And to be on that ballot and to be recognized and myself from five or six years ago by at least one person um, spoke volumes of, of the type of person they thought I was or the type of player they thought I was. And especially in the, in the climate of the steroid era in which we were in. You know what I mean? So for people to recognize that, hey, these guys might not have huge numbers, but we believe that these guys are clean. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, and you yeah, talk so, about, you know, people ahead. looking up to you. Yeah. Yeah. So um, like I said, just to, just to be on the, uh, on the ballot is not everyone gets on the ballot, first Great. of all. You know what I mean? And to be on the ballot and be recognized and then playing with guys like Tori and Latroy and David Ortiz and, you know, guys, we were babies when we came up, you know what I mean? And, and to see these guys have a legitimate shot of being in the Hall of Fame, I mean, that's exciting. Absolutely. And I believe, uh, Nico, your dad was on the Hall of Fame uh, ballot for a year as well, a member of the Twins Hall of Fame. Um, as you look at that, and Jack just mentioned it, being people that you could look up to, and I know your your career was not baseball, but, um, you know, these are guys that I know not only have you looked up to then, but you still are in touch with these guys and, and looking to them for advice in many cases. Yeah, no, 100%, 100%. Um, you know, like everything they did on the field to the side, you know, these are great people, like I said, people that – taught me little things, you know, how to keep your inner circle close and how, what to look for in people. And, um, you know, although acting and baseball are completely different, they have similarities in terms of how overwhelming it can be at times. And so I take a lot of the lessons in, uh, that they showed in terms of being professional and also um, realizing that baseball is a game at the end of the day. And 
what really matters uh, when you go home um, are the people that get around you, your family, your friends, and the people you love. Royce, I'll ask you the same question because, as you mentioned, you looked up to Tori when you were growing up, but at the same time, I mean, now you not only have a chance to somewhat work with him on the field, but I know he's been someone you've, uh, you know, talked to a lot off the field as well in a mentorship kind of role, and, and that has to be important as well. 100% is, and, uh, you know, for anyone that has played the game, to me, uh, that is willing to teach anybody, I'd love to hear from them as much as possible. But, uh, you know, Tori is a big advocate on teaching and um, helping the youth, and uh, he still does it to this day with the Twins organization. And um, man, he's a lot of fun. Like Jack said, he's a great teammate. You can tell he was a great teammate because he keeps the clubhouse going and um, keeps everyone loose in there. Absolutely. And again, we welcome whether you're watching live on Twins Daily Facebook, Twitter, or Periscope, or YouTube. Feel free to send us your questions and. In fact, we do have a question on, on here already, and I'm, I'm going to leave this up here. It is for Jock, but uh, from David Youngs, one of our Twins Daily writers, it says, you and Tori sit in Twins history as one of the greatest outfield combinations, but what was the greatest piece of of, uh, off, of advice that he gave you and that you gave him? Also, as a 23-year-old, your jersey was the first one I ever had. Uh -huh, thank you. Um I, I think the greatest advice, piece of advice that we gave each other because we were kind of pitted against one another um, early as center fielders coming into uh, the big leagues was there's going to be room enough for both of us and like there's no room for jealousy. There's no room for, you know, to be angry at each other because of, of the situation. And so like that even brought our friendship closer it's just like man it's it, this if you play and do what you're supposed to do there's going to be room for both of us so that that was the, the greatest piece of advice that we shared with one another early in our career nico i want to ask you too now again you were in the clubhouse your dad was still there with these guys in 2002 2003 so again you were really really young at that point but yeah. do you have a uh, tory and jock story that you'd uh I mean, it's just a PG-13 show, so uh, I, I can already see the discomfort showing up here. Um, no, yeah, no. I mean, there's so many. So many. We can be here all night talking about stories. Um, yeah, and, you know, stuff that, you know, um, creates camaraderie in the clubhouse. I think chemistry is more important to a team than talent. Uh, and um, this team had it for, um, I'm trying to think, I was thinking about it like before today. Um, it was in 2015, so a little way after 02, but 2015, it was like Corey's last season. And it was like my dad's first year coaching. Um, and they were playing in Anaheim. And I think in like three weeks, I was headed to Spain to shoot a movie. It was basically the last time I was going to see my dad for like three, four months or something like that. Um, and it was like my first role that I had to like travel I was kind of like nervous about it and everything. I just remember Tori called me over uh, to his locker and we just sat down for 30 minutes and just talked about life. I mean, I wish I had something more exciting, but um, taking those like 30 minutes out of like his day before a game to really tell me, um, give me advice about not only career, but about being a man and, and um, taking care of your loved ones and stuff like that. It, it was words that he told me that I that I still think about today. So, absolutely, Royce. Let's get to you too. I mean, uh, Tori was a first round pick. You were a first round pick. I'm sure there's you know some pressure that you put your on yourself in that role. Um, has he given you any advice on the field or in how you you know handle handle the the fact that you're still trying to develop that you're not the product. And it took him a while to develop, even after he got to the big leagues. Is that you know, is that a source of conversation or something you he's been able to teach to you and, and being patient, being patient along the way? Oh yeah, you know, sure. it's uh, and what you know, what something he always says is you can grow, you know, one percent better every day. You can always get better. Uh, he said he, he learned some things uh, at the tail end of his career that helped him play and, and be consistent on the field that uh, he wishes he knew when he was 20 or 21 years old. And so uh, for me to hear those things, it's like, wow, uh, you know, hopefully I'll be able to be in the big league still at 37 and, and balling out like he did. But, um, 
for him to be learning still at that age about the game means that there's a lot left to learn. And um, for me, it's and me and him in particular to we talk about more off field things than anything, just because uh, at the end of the day, he says, just go out there and have fun and be yourself, you know, because when you go out there on the field and you be yourself, you play at your best. And uh, that's the best piece of advice I've gotten from, from almost everybody that has talked to me anything about playing in the game and that has played. Um, but off the field, there's a lot of stuff, you know, it's whether it's financial literacy, uh, you know, real estate, uh, food joints, uh, all that stuff. It's really fun to talk to him about, man. And uh, he's very knowledgeable about it. So it's a very, very cool mentorship. Yeah. Absolutely. And again, I want to remind everyone, if you want to ask your questions, please feel free to do so. Uh, try to limit how long said questions are because they take up space on the on the screen. So kind of, kind of try to keep them short. Um, Jock, Royce brought up uh, financial literacy, and um, I was watching one of your videos for the uh, for the All Hands on Deck organization that you started in San Diego, and and you mentioned the same thing that it was more than just baseball; it was about life and education and financial awareness. And I'm just wondering, is that something you guys talked about in the minor leagues, or once you got to the big leagues? Is that something that you guys were talking about as players, or is that something you've maybe learned since then? Actually, no, and that's why we're so big on it now. They're like nobody. I mean, they they give you a bunch of money, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody tells you how to 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 save it or you know spend it or not spend it, hold on to it. Actually, Barry Bonds was really the first person who told us about it, and this was back in O two. Uh, we, Tori and I were in Japan uh, with the All Star series where major leaguers played against the Japanese All Stars. He sat us down for about an hour and 30 minutes and told us about saving money and putting it away and not buying the latest, greatest cars, jewelry. You know, we don't need 15 houses um, and things like that. And so, like, we just, we just felt, we felt and feel that it's important to start guys off young and, and we're talking middle school um, age. I'm teaching them about the value of a dollar and, and how to balance checkbooks and you know, hey, you don't have to spend it just because you make it and save it and things like that. And so, I mean, to hear Royce talk about already uh, uh, restaurants and, and real estate and stuff like that is great because uh, that's, that's the goal. That's our goal right now is to get people thinking, young people thinking, at a young age about, you know, holding on to the money. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we do have another question here. This one is for Nico. So let's uh, pull that up. It's also from David. Uh, Nico, you mentioned that Tori was influential to you as a man, not just as a baseball player. In the career that you have now, what are some lessons and values that transfer to the acting world that are also relevant to the baseball world? Um, that's a good question. I'd have to say uh, failure. I think baseball is a, you know, it's a game of failure. You can go three for 10, it's going to be great. Um, same thing with acting, you know. We've been on thousands of opportunities, you know, we've gotten maybe, you know, 20, you know. Um, it just, baseball really embedded this uh, this attitude in me about you're not going to get them all. Um, treat failure as your best friend because you, you learn a lot through failure and um, succeeding, I think, in my opinion. Um, so that's definitely probably the number one thing I took from the sports world is, is how to have a happy relationship with failure. Yeah, because if there's a game that teaches you how to fail, and, and that's such a big part of it, that it's definitely baseball. Um, <laughs> Royce, I'm sitting there thinking you're the one guy kind of in the organization right now, uh, playing now, and you know you're getting, you're hearing this from Jock Jones. You've got a close relationship with Tori. Uh, Nico's dad is a Twins Hall of Famer, and you know he learned a lot of it from him. You look at that whole group of the team that saved baseball in Minnesota, and you know we all know Jock was on the cover with Tori of the ESPN magazine. And these are guys that are around that you can actually talk to. That has to be important, not only for you, but for your teammates as well. Is that is that a uh, resource that guys are able to? And, and I mean, it's almost got to be nerve wracking to reach out to Jock Jones and say, hey, can we talk? <laughs> I've got a question. Uh, are you able to do that? 
Yeah, you know, uh, fortunately enough, we are. And uh, it's so it's so awesome and so cool. But at the same time, you're right, it was nerve wracking at first for me to, uh, I remember Rod Crew, my first spring training was, he took me over, he's like, hey, come here, young blood, we're gonna go bunt. And so we, we would bunt for hours and hours. And then he's like, here's my phone number to call me. And I want you to bunt 15 times this year. Well, I didn't do that. And I remember he reached out to me and be like, hey, I need you to get a couple more bunts in. And uh, that was the first ever time where I was kind of like a little nervous talking to someone over text even. So, uh, you know, it is kind of nerve wracking, but at the same time, it's a great resource. And that's the way we learn the game is from people who've been there, done that, and uh, know how to do it the right way. And it, it was definitely a lot of fun. I'm probably going out of order here now at this point because my memory is not great. But, um, Jack, did, did you guys realize after the whole contraction talk and things like that, was it a big motivational thing for you guys? And who kind of led the way on those teams? Uh, you know, Tom Kelly, I believe, managed for one more year after that. Or, no, he uh, was done and Gardy took over. Um, you know, were, were, who were some of the leaders on that team that kind of helped you through that and found that motivation? I don't think there was – I mean, Doug was the, the, the vocal guy. He was the most vocal out of all of us. But the great thing about our our nucleus and the guys we had was we all came to, up together pretty much through the minor leagues. And so we had a team full of leaders, um, some guys led by voice, some guys led by example. Um, it, it, and and – we were just able to keep each other in check in the clubhouse. But, yeah, we, we kind of use that as a rallying uh, tool or cry um, in O2. And, and, I mean, we got up to a good start, and it just um, it carried over to three straight uh, playoff appearances. But I don't think there was one guy that, that I would say, you know, uh, uh, led the charge. It was just a, a, a group as a, a collective group. Um, we came together and we banded together and um, we, we just wanted to show, you know, the world and the baseball world that you guys are trying to get rid of us, but we have a pretty good product that we run out on the field every night. <clears throat> Absolutely. And it, you know, kind of brought me back after, you know, being done with ball in college and getting away for a little while. And I certainly enjoyed that. And I'm, you know, I'm within a couple of months uh, age of, you and Tori and a lot of those guys. So it was fun for me to yeah. see guys my age still doing that. And um, Nico, I kind of wanted to talk to you a little bit about, um, you know, again, we talked about Jock has started his all hands on deck organization. Your dad started the Eddie, Eddie Gordado Foundation uh, for autism, not only awareness, but for helping families. Um, and, and what's pretty cool to me is like, I talked to your dad quite a bit at Twins Fest this year and he was super proud to, be able to talk about you. He was so proud, but he also talked about how he and Jock and some other guys were taking a late night flight or an early morning flight just to get back in time for the uh, stars and strikes uh, event that you had. And some of the cast, the party of five was at um, that. He talked over and over about it starts with good people and Tom Kelly and Grand garden hire and Jock and Tori and Latroy and, and, and your dad, um, you know, how involved have you been in, in that organization and what does it mean to you to be able to give back and to see these guys that you've worked up to for so long, so willing to give back? Uh, I mean, it means the world, you know, um, a lot of these people like what we've been naming, you know, they're like family. Um, they are family. They are family. And when they show up for, um, for a certain cause, I mean, so near and dear to my heart and my whole family's heart, the world. And then it, you know, it's like Jack said about leading by example, and um, it definitely just shows me how I want to lead. You know, um, eventually when I get older, when I'm you know, your guys' age, I hope to inspire people how these guys have inspired me. Yeah, I don't know how Jack feels getting old and young, so that's just my opinion. <laughs> um, Royce, you know, I'll oh, go ahead, Jack. Yeah, no, I was just gonna say it. it uh, we're all <clears throat> proud of our kids, and they all grew up in the same clubhouse and played. You know, went out on Sunday mornings and played baseball out on the field, and it's. I mean, it. it we had our time. But now it's about supporting our kids. And, you know, we, we're all excited to see Nico 
um, do his thing because shoot, Nico was was one of the quiet ones out of all the kids growing up, and it's it's just cool to see him do his thing and uh, little Tori do his thing, and my son's doing his thing, and it's not something that we just talk about or preach. It's something that we live. You know, we like we pull for each other. We're all pulling for each other's kids, and so it's just great to see these guys um, come into their own and do things on their own. And so whatever they do, we support, you know, wholeheartedly. Well, while we're on that, talk a little bit about your, your son, your kids. And, um, you know, I, I know the other thing is you graduated from USC just a little over a year ago, maybe. And yeah, I know you yeah, it'll be a year ago um, uh, next month. I know it was important to you, and I loved hearing what you had to say about how can I preach the importance of education to my kids if I don't go back. I know it was important to you. Uh, how important, I guess, can you like verbalize that? Why it was so oh, important yeah, to you? Absolutely. I mean, like, actually my daughter was was the one who <laughs> pushed me into uh, going back to school and, and really finishing. I mean, I told my mom and my grandmother I would do it, but we were having a conversation. And I was talking to her about college and, and going to school and getting educated. And she goes, how can you tell me about getting a, a, a degree or education when you don't have one? So it kind of it's kind of an uppercut to the chin, you know. So I was like, well, I better get on it and, and and finish up and you know show them that you know persevering and and, and finishing things that you started, um, people are watching you and they're listening to you. And and how can I preach and and talk to people about education when I didn't um, fulfill my uh, you know deal about finishing and, and getting my degree? And so I went back and did that and. It was important, and, and I'm proud of doing it, and I didn't really necessarily have to. But just, just finishing what you start, that was a huge deal for me. Royce, I guess as you're, as you're hearing some of this and you think about you know, someone like my age, Jock's age, I mean, I grew up watching those guys. I'm going to remember the 87 and 91 World Series, remember the players from those age. Um, you know, I was – Kirby Puckett, Chuck Knobloch. I mean, those were my guys when I was, you know, in my teen and informative years. Um, I mean, who are some of those guys for you? And now as you're hearing us kind of reminisce about that and, and Jock talking about his kids or Nico being Eddie's son and all that, I mean, what kind of thoughts go through your mind? But first of all, we got to put this comment up there um, regarding the uh, Stars and Strikes. Uh, Royce's dad saying it is a great event. And I, by the way, I want to encourage people, go to the Eddie Gordado Foundation.com, donate. They do a lot of great work. So with all that, Royce, <laughs> your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, uh, hearing all this stuff is very, very awesome. And uh, like I said, just the whole idea of learning from these guys is, is key because I feel like, you know, as they teach you, you continue to learn, you're going to know and process these things earlier at a younger age and then be able to pass it on to the next generation and so forth. And uh, hopefully one day I'll be able to, to say the same things about some of my teammates and their kids and root for them as well. All right. By the way, those listening, whatever you're listening on, if you have any last minute questions, let us know. We got about five or six minutes to go um, before we got other events that have to uh, go to. So I'm going to take this one from David. He's asked one question of everybody. Now he's asking Royce, you grew up getting to watch guys like Jock and Tori. Who are your favorite players to watch when you grew up? Yeah, I think I mentioned a little bit before, but uh, it was definitely Derek Jeter, uh, Tori Hunter, Matt Kemp, Carlos Correa, when he, right before I got drafted a couple of years before, pretty much. Uh, Francisco Lindor, Javi Baez. Uh, I just I really like the whole – they got a little bit of flair, but for sure, uh, the full tops that can also, you know, have good arms. They play versatile. Uh, you know, Bias plays all over the field pretty much. So it's uh, it's kind of what I would like to be one day, you know. Uh, I want to ask Nico, I want to ask you the same thing because I know you ask uh, you follow baseball, um, but also you're busy. So who are, are your favorite teams? I know you get to some Angels games, maybe not this year, but in past years. Who are some of the guys you enjoy watching now and, and back then too? Um, I mean, back then, to be honest, I didn't really get into baseball. I didn't know anybody outside of the clubhouse until my dad retired. Like, I didn't really get into baseball until like 2010. Um, but 
Yeah, I go to a lot of Angel games. I, I still got like a O2 grudge against the Angels, so I go yeah. and I root against them usually. But um, yeah, you know, everybody does like whatever, you know. Um, um, but right now, I mean, I mean, I'm obviously a huge Twins fan. Um, watching everybody come up to like when my dad was coaching and seeing them like, make careers for themselves is something super cool. Um, looking forward to see Royce, you know, turn out into a star. Um, and I don't know, I, I like Bobby Baez a lot um, as well. Um, I mean, it's cliche to say, but Mike Trout. It's just nice to see somebody with so much talent um, hold himself up with so much class as well. So I do like, as much as, you know, Angels, I do like enjoying them. I do enjoy watching my child play. My favorite story that your dad told me at Twins Fest was that they happened to move your family to Orange County right after that 2002 playoff series. And he had to drop you off at school, and he saw so many of those stupid rally monkeys. He used rally. the word other than stupid, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those damn rally monkeys. It was like we moved in, I think, I think September, end of September. So right when my dad got done, he just. We came back here and everywhere, dude. Everywhere. It was, it was their first World Series um, appearance. So it, the whole city was going crazy. And it was just like the perfect year <laughs> to move <Yeah>. out. <laughs> but, you know, they had a good um, Yeah, go ahead. Um, Jock, I, I want to ask you kind of the same question. Are you able to or do you continue to follow the game? Maybe not as much as when you played, but uh, – do you get to games? Are you still in contact with players? Who are some of the guys you enjoy watching? Of course, like the, like these guys said, and, and, and Royce, because he's he's actively uh, um, in the organization. But I follow the Twins still, and I, I was pulling for them this this past uh, playoff postseason. Them and and it, I was kind of torn with them and Dusty because Dusty is kind of like my dad now. Um, we're really tight, so I was kind of conflicted with that. Um, but but I enjoy. You know, watching Mike Trout, I enjoy watching Mookie Betts. I enjoy watching Garrett Cole pitch. Um, Max Scherzer, I enjoy watching him pitch. And I, what I what I enjoy most about the game is the personalities that are able to come out now. And everyone's not so anal about guys, you know, out on the field having a good time and celebrating. Um, and then I really enjoyed <laughs> this season uh, with no fans in the stands, believe it or not, just, just to see that the players – um, still enjoy playing the game, and they play just as hard as as if there was forty or fifty thousand people a night in the stadiums. And it was just a, a, a cool to hear um, what the players were saying on the field and and the conversations they were having. I mean, it was just cool to watch the game of baseball being played this past season. All right, last question for each one of you. I'm going to start with Nico because I know if you to get going, feel free to. It's kind of a two part. Number one. Um, what are you working on? You got any projects? I know COVID's kind of shut things down a little bit. You got any projects we can be looking forward to? And then secondly, you know, just to kind of summarize, you know, either what you've heard tonight or, or something about, uh, you know, Tory again, we're kind of celebrating him being on the Hall of Fame ballot and the career that he had. So I guess kind of a two-part question there for us. Yeah. Uh, part one, I mean, yeah, the, the industry is kind of taking a hit, obviously, with COVID. I do have an episode of um, Magnum P.I. coming out on December 11th. That was fun. A little uh, action pack. It was my first thing doing an action running away, like gunfire. It was super cool. So check that out. That'll be on CBS. Um, and then what was the second part to that question? I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, just kind of summarize, you know, some of your thoughts on Tori uh, as we're kind of trying to celebrate him here throughout the night. Uh, what are some of these, you know, either a story or just, Kind of summarize your thoughts. Yeah, um, I don't know. Just like it, it's cool when you get to see people that you know you looked up to, especially uh, being put on the ballot. Like Jock said, you know, for these guys, it's such an honor, like, and like the icing on the cake for them. Um, it'll be cool. I know people. If you know about it, I mean, you know, people looked up to you in a certain aspect. You know. Um, well, I mean, I'm just, I'm just proud of Latroy and proud of Tori for uh, being on there. Michael Kadire as well. Um, 
I'm just I'm just excited for him. It couldn't have happened to a, to a better group of guys. All right, Jack, I'm gonna go to you next. Uh, just kind of again, thanks for joining tonight. Uh, maybe you've got one more story or just kind of a, a general thought on this Hall of Fame honor and and I don't know. I again try not to embarrass him too much. I'm sure if he watches yeah, this, I, the, the stories that I have with Tori, I can't really. On this show, but no, like I, I, we had a conversation leading up to this thing, and nobody knows what the criteria is anymore to be in the Hall of Fame. Man, you got guys with 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 less numbers in the Hall of Fame. You got guys with better numbers not in the Hall of Fame. I mean, um, like I said, Tory was a great all around player. He stole a couple bases early in his career. Um, He turned into a a hitter that hit for average, and he developed some power which his offense doesn't, doesn't get nearly as much credit as his defense does, which is a shame. Uh, when you threw those numbers up there, you look at those numbers, he's got over 1,300 RBIs and 350 homers, and he's got a career 277 average or something like that with nine gold gloves. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if those aren't Hall of Fame numbers, I don't know what are. And, and plus, um, his, his leadership skills in the clubhouse and on the field. I mean, they're like second to none. I mean, he, he was – he was sought after um, with the Tigers. He was sought after with the with the Angels. And if you look at both of those teams, they kind of suffered when he left. Um, the Twins got better when he came back. I mean, uh, what else do you want from a guy that you uh, want to put in the Hall of Fame? So um, that that's what I have to say about that. So um, hopefully, you know, my fingers are crossed. Hopefully, he'll 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 get the nod, and I'll be there if he does. That's awesome. And, and maybe we'll have a different show where people have to pay per view to get the stories or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> and I do think, I think a comparative uh, is Andrew Jones, who's been on the ballot a few times. Jones has maybe 80 more home runs, but I think tory has got about 150 more doubles than 10 gold gloves, nine gold gloves, you know. So, right. I again, kind of uh, going back to you again, you're, you're the young guy here that's playing the game and you've, you've seen Tori before you got drafted, when you got drafted through this process uh, and now you're kind of hearing some of these stories. It's It's got to kind of put the whole thing into kind of a bowl or whatever and like I said now you're in Texas, not living too far away from him. I'm sure that uh, you know, there's just so many stories you're you're developing and like, you, like earlier was said uh, you know, I think you've developed a relationship with his sons, you know, the way Nico did 15, 18 years ago. So, I mean, it has to be kind of a, a fun journey. But anyway, my long-winded question is just, you know, kind of sum up your thoughts on Tori and, and what he's meant to you over the last five or six years. Yeah, I think, you know, he's meant, you know, the world to me in my career. Uh, it's like I tell people all the time, it's like having a second father because, you know, my father has taught me and, you know, my whole life growing up, you know, he raised me to be the, the best man I could be best person I could be. And, uh, you know, I can't thank him enough for what he's done, but in terms of baseball and financial literacy and stuff that, um, you know, my dad didn't get to experience in his lifetime, but I was taught from Tory really, you know? And so that's why he's really my second father and uh, you know, him and his whole family have meant a lot to me. I, I literally just came from over there or taken over there about five o'clock. So, uh, you know, I'm over there three days a week uh, getting in some work and continuing to learn. And so it's just, it's always really cool and a great blessing to, to know what he's done for the game and um, to have him in your corner. It's great. Royce, I do have one question here that I'd want to ask you that did come in. I didn't see it earlier, but uh, from Jim Royce, thank you for taking time to chat with our son before you first came with the Miracle, um, who are, by the way, good muscles going forward. Hitting a homer at that game was great. Looking forward to seeing you at Target Field soon. What advice would you give him and his teammates as 14-year-old ball players who are still working on their skills? What are some of the things you'd uh, advise a 14-year-old player and his teammates? Uh, you know, I think the biggest set of advice I'd give to a lot of players and a lot of younger guys especially is um, is just to have fun. And, you know, growing up, I loved the game. Uh, I never really – I was very raw. I just played I never really had a hitting coach or uh, did extra practices or anything. I just – I played and had fun with my friends and, and all my buddies and I uh, played wiffle ball in the backyard and all these kinds of things. And, um, you know, growing up, it was just about having fun and 
uh, you know, my mom and dad were huge on letting me be me, and uh, I never they never forced me into baseball or anything. I, I played all kinds of sports, but uh, I think having fun was the main key, and I think that's why I still have this love for the game and why I work so hard at trying to be, uh, you know, live my dream of playing baseball. And, uh, I, you know, I started real I was decently good, but it all started with having fun, and it still goes to this day by having fun. Well, speaking of having fun, you guys, this has been a lot of fun for me, kind of reliving some of that and hearing some of the, the stories that you all shared. So, again, I want to say thank you to Jock Jones, Miko Gordado, Royce Lewis, and, and everyone for listening and for taking the time to ask a question. And hopefully you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Uh, for those of you watching live, thank you for doing so. Please feel free to share that. Um, if you're listening later, this will be on the Twins Daily Podcast, wherever you download podcasts. Um, and again, we'll be back later in the week. I want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving, but again, thank you guys so much for taking time. I really had a great time and, and appreciate your willingness to come on and talk. So, uh, good to talk to you all again, and uh, hopefully we can do it again sometime. Of course. Of course. Thank you. Thanks all right. Thanks, y'all. Have a good night. Let's go to you. Good